Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we are going to be talking again about hypothesis testing, but we're going to be providing some examples because I'm just a little bit anxious that we've been doing, you know, a fair sort of a bit of talking about the theoretics. And I think it's always best to sort of flesh out these ideas by means of an example. So let's say we were interested to find out what factors affect a particular company's sales. So the idea is we have some company's sales over time. So maybe a company's sales, sort of weekly sales, looks something like that. And in particular, we're interested in whether TV causes sales to go up, right? And perhaps we have a sort of TV spend, which looks something like this over time. So the idea here is that we would, in order to test it statistically, we would run a regression where we have our dependent variable, which is, let's say, sales over time. And we would then have a whole host of potential explanatory factors, anything that we sort of think could be important. And as well, we include TV or TV spend in this example. So perhaps we include TV spend and we find out that for this particular sample, when we sort of estimate it using eViews or Stata, the sort of coefficient comes out as a value of 10. Together with that coefficient, there'll also be reported a standard error on that coefficient. And let's say for this particular example, we found a standard error of three. So how do we interpret this? Well, the idea is that we have to construct some statistic which is based on the coefficient value 10 and its standard error. And then we need to compare that value of that statistic to a given distribution, because under the null hypothesis here, which is that, in fact, the effect of TV is zero, then under the null hypothesis, this T statistic we construct will be T distributed. And the alternative hypothesis here is that beta is, in fact, greater than zero, because we're not thinking about an alternative whereby beta doesn't equal zero, for example. So this is a one-tailed test, because we're really only testing whether TV has a positive effect. We're not interested if it happened to be negative. Okay, so the idea here is, first of all, we need to construct a t-statistic, which is equal to, well, we form it by taking our coefficient estimate, in this case, 10, and dividing it by the standard error in that estimate, in this case, 3, and that comes out at 3 and a third. Well, what does this three and a third mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything yet. We have to compare it to a sort of critical value, which we look up in a T distribution. So in a T distribution, if you sort of look it up, it's sort of been tabulated, you have a column which says degrees of freedom, and that sort of runs one, two, you know, 30. And it, it normally stops around 30, or perhaps it goes up to 100, and then it's just sort of fixed. So that's sort of one column. And the sort of row, or the column headings rather, have different p-values. So you have a whole range of p-values for both one-tailed and two-tailed test. But for this particular test, we are concerned with a one-tailed test because we're only testing against the alternative where beta is greater than zero. And typically we draw a cutoff for a one-tailed test or at a value of 0.05. Yeah, because what this says is if we um, were to get a value of t, which was dictated a p-value of around 0.05, then it would be very unlikely that this would have occurred given that the null hypothesis was true. So the idea is that we look up in our t-table for a sort of p-value of 0.5 and the given degrees of freedom for our t-statistic. Well, what are the given degrees of freedom for our t-statistic? Well, it actually turns out that this is dictated by the degrees of freedom of our particular estimator for the population um, variance, which is actually contained within our standard error of beta hat. And remember when we sort of talked about this for the case of two, a sort of bivariate regression, I had M minus two degrees of freedom. In the case of a sort of multivariate problem where I've got sort of other variables other than TV, it turns out that the number of degrees of freedom is actually N minus K, where K is the number of um, non-constant regressors. So perhaps in this example, we sort of have a sort of number of degrees of freedom, which is let's say 30. So we look up where that crosses with the value of 0.5 and where they cross, there will be a value for the t-distribution. And it's 
normally the sort of critical value for a t distribution is around two and if you're thinking about a two-tailed test or so perhaps 1.7 if you're thinking about a one one-tailed test but obviously it depends on the number of degrees of freedom and the p-value you're talking about but as a sort of it's quite a good rule of thumb that if i get a t-value which is uh, greater in magnitude than two then it's sort of relatively indicative of the fact that I might have some sort of significance there. So we've looked up this value in our t table, we've got a value of two, what do we need to then do? Well, we need to compare our value for the t statistic with this critical value. And because it is greater than our critical value, that will actually lead us in this circumstance to reject the null hypothesis. And we could sort of say with some degree of confidence that TB was affecting sales. Uh, obviously, I'm sort of assuming here that I've included all sort of other possible explanatory factors. So I'm not sort of having to worry about bias or inefficiency of my least squared estimators. So in the next video, we are going to provide another example of uh, how we go about hypothesis testing with regard to T distributions. I'll see you then.